There's no better way to spend a morning out than to chase a short line railroad. Thankfully, North Carolina has an abundance of unique short lines to choose from, and there was one particular one that had really caught my attention. I pulled off on Highway 64 and drove into the small town of Spring Hope, North Carolina, ready to start my day's adventure. No trains to be found here, other than this old railroad depot, now converted as the city's public library. It was a fairly quick stop before I was back on the road again, continuing my search for my short line. A railroad crossing warning was a good sign that we were getting close by. I parked alongside the Hunt Forest Resources site in Momire, North Carolina, as I had found my train of interest. Today, we'd be following the Carolina Coastal's unique Nash County turn job. I had never seen a trackside logging industry before and was in complete awe of the sheer size of the stacked logs as the crew worked to grab the loaded cars out from the camp. This turn job runs under symbol CLNA-115, operating for the Carolina Coastal Railway, or otherwise known as the CLNA. First formed in 1985, the Nash County Railroad was first brought to life by then-parent company Lorenberg & Southern. The Nash County's early motive power adopted the bold red and white paint scheme signature to that of the LNS family. When the Lorenberg and Southern was acquired by the Gulf and Ohio Railway Company in 1994, the Nash County would fall under the umbrella of railroads affected by the takeover. The transition gave way to the invasion of GNO's all black locomotives, replacing the aging EMD switchers that had previously run the line. And 17 years later, in the year 2011, the most recent chapter of the Nash County saga would occur, with the Carolina Coastal Railway Company acquiring ownership of the small short line. Today, the CLNA continues to operate the 15-mile branch line, with Nashville, North Carolina serving as the home base for the job. We'd be starting our day here in Momire, North Carolina, as CLNA 115 prepares to take its loaded logs east for the interchange in Rocky Mount. I couldn't get over just how incredible these log cars were, especially now seeing them in person. Their design looks very similar to that of an intermodal spine car, but modified to have braces along the sides of the car to withhold the logs. Certainly a very unique piece of railroad rolling stock. With a 10 mile per hour speed limit across the line, Chasing the job couldn't be any easier, as the ragged-looking GP9 leads the train running long hood forward.
quite possibly the most beautiful and photogenic spot along the line, I pulled off at Corbett Road just outside of Nashville and watched as the old EMD Jeep worked hard to bring their train over the hill and down the jointed rail. Driving into Nashville, I couldn't help but laugh at the sign on the water tower. Being native to the Tennessee Nashville, this was quite the stark contrast from the city I call home. But I will say this, the traffic here beats anything like the traffic in the Music City. The sound of a P5 horn off in the distance gave me a heads up that 115 was approaching downtown, as a large cloud loomed overhead in the sky blocking out a perfect sunlit shot. Of course, a redemption shot was necessary, as I quickly made it to the east side of town, just in time to watch them roll across the Washington Street crossing.
As the train continued east through Nashville, I noticed this beautiful, wide-open field shot at the very last minute, worthy enough to stop the car and enjoy the beautiful scene in front of me. The beautiful sounding old cast P5 rings off in the distance as the 115 crew begins to pull their train into downtown Rocky Mount. We catch up with 115 on the other side of town as they slowly bring their train into the interchange yard. The yard is interchanged daily by CSX which conveniently sits right next to CSX's busy A-Line corridor, while also being a mere mile or less from CSX's main Rocky Mount classification yard. Once dropped, the loaded logs will sit in the yard and wait for the CSX interchange job to come handle them. With the cars now placed on the interchange track, the crew runs their locomotive around to the other end of the yard to begin working the inbound cars that CSX had left for them. CSX had dropped off a cut of eight hoppers for the CLNA, all of which were bound for the Purdue plant back in Nashville. While the crew began to sort their new cars, I decided to grab a quick lunch at Chick-fil-A just off screen, before rejoining 115 at Old Spring Hope Road on the outskirts of Rocky Mount as they begin their trek back west.
Having some idea of what to expect this time by, I pulled off the road with just enough time to grab this slow roll by of 115 crossing that field from earlier. We're back in downtown Nashville, as CLNA 115 cruises right along Railroad Street. Listen as the trackmobile working Braswell Milling Company gives a horn tap for the 115. Back at Corbett Road, the crew arrives at Purdue, ready to spot their eight cars for the customer. The conductor climbs off the locomotive, while the engineer pulls the train clear of the yard lead, ready to throw their cars into the yard. Years of railroad history can be seen under the surface of CLNA 7003, as the 67-year-old GP9RM was built for the Canadian National Railway in May of 1956, evidenced by the Ghost Noodle logo bleeding through the black paint. And that was all she wrote for the day, as the crew backs the eight cars into the facility. Thanks for railfanning this unique short-line operation with me today. I want to give a huge thanks to my friend Harold Hodnett for lending me his fantastic photos of the Nash County Railroad in its heydays.
Another big thanks goes out to my buddy Kayshawn Corey for all his help with information about this job. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.